Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to give simple definitions of some common terms such as uh, mutually exclusive events and later on you will see the definition of independent or dependent events and also complementary events. Okay, so we're going to start off with this term first. The idea of mutually exclusive events is defined as events that cannot occur together or cannot happen at the same time. And visually speaking, this is how our Venn diagram will look like. So you can see that there is a clear separation between set A and set B. In other words, uh, there is no intersection. Okay. In other words, um, you cannot see this when you have mutually exclusive events. There is no intersection, no intersection, yeah? And that's how our Venn diagram will look like. Okay, um, or in other words, um, what you have seen from the previous video, example of mutually um, exclusive events can also be depicted if you have a sample space that looks like this where sample space can also be uh, thought of in terms of having, for example, in that previous video, we talked about students, and students are separated into male and female. So therefore, set A and set B, we can think about it as A and B, can further be separated as such. So this could be set A. It covers the whole region here and set B covers this smaller region for example so um, in the previous example we have uh, somehow illustrated the idea of mutually exclusive events using a Venn diagram so those are some of the variation that you can expect from the Venn diagram representation okay um, Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, what else that you can think of when you say mutually exclusive events other than gender? For example, <coughs> male and female. Oops, sorry. Male and female. So clearly, these two events are mutually exclusive. You cannot have an intersection. You won't have male and female together. You are either male or female. Yes. What else? Uh, it could be pass or fail. That means you can either pass an exam or fail an exam. It cannot be you passing and failing the exam at the same time. There is uh, no way for us to achieve that condition. Yes. What else? Uh, uh, maybe a life or dead you you cannot be alive and dead at the same time you are either alive or you are dead so those are examples of mutually exclusive events where these events cannot happen together so when they cannot happen together there will be no no intersection they are going to be clearly clearly separated okay now let's look at this uh, simple example this is considered a classic example where you uh, roll a die and you observe the number of dots that you get so let's define the following events where you have a is getting even number so even number is two four and six and b is getting odd number so odd number is going to be one three and five and C is uh, an event where you observe a number that is less than 5. So less than 5 is going to be 1, 2, 3 and 4. So those are three events that are defined and uh, is related to the experiment of rolling a die and observing the number of dots. Yeah. So question here is, are events A and B mutually exclusive? Uh, if they are mutually exclusive, like I said earlier, there will be no intersection. There will be no intersection. And what does it mean? It means you don't have similar elements in both sets. So in other words, no similar 
elements in both sides. And clearly for this question here, uh, the elements here is 2, 4, 6 and for this one is 1, 3, 5. So no similar elements. And because of that reason, we can say that A and B are mutually exclusive. Now what about A and C? So let's look at A and C. Uh, so you can see that for event A, we have 2, 4, 6 as the elements. And for event C, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And clearly, uh, these two elements here uh, are similar okay, in event A and event C. So there are similar events. So there are similar events, which means if you uh, try to visualize this in a Venn diagram, there will be an intersection area where you have elements 2 and 4 residing in that intersection area yeah and because of that uh, because there are similar events uh, shared between a and c therefore uh, a and c are not mutually exclusive okay this is as simple as that right um let's look at the definition of independent and dependent events now, if we have an, uh, two independent events, it means that the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of another event. Okay, so in other words, if we give this conditional probability, this is the conditional probability, probability of B given A. So A has already happened. So this is already happened. If A has already happened, doesn't matter what it is, it is not going to change the probability of getting B. So therefore, if, if the events are independent, doesn't matter that A has already happened here, the probability of B given A is going to be equal to probability of B. So in other words, it is saying that A is not going to change whatever probability is observed for event B. So this conditional probability, given A has already happened, is going to be similar to the probability of getting event B. It's not going to change. Okay. And similarly, if you use this notation, okay, this is another notation. Um, sometimes people are more comfortable writing in this manner. So it means here in this case that uh, this is the conditional probability conditional probability and which event has already happened you can see that B is the event that has already occurred okay so this one is already happened so doesn't matter what happened to B it is not going to change the probability for A so that's why on the right hand side here A is going to the probability of A is going to be um, as it is conditional probability of a given b is going to be similar to the probability of getting a itself okay now for dependent events if the events are dependent that means um, when a happened so when a is observed therefore the probability of B given A is not going to be similar to the original probability of getting B. So that means when A happens, it is going to to alter the original probability of getting B. So it is no longer equal in this sense. Okay? So probability of B given A is not equal to probability of B and vice versa. I think um, in order to see this clearly, we should go and look at the example yeah okay let's talk about whether the event female and in favor are independent or dependent all right again uh, if okay if events are independent this is what you should prove you should prove that a given b 
is equal to a probability of a given b is going to equal to probability of a so in other words when b happens when b has already been observed uh, it doesn't matter what it is the probability of a given b is going to be equal to the original probability of obtaining a okay so this is uh, the idea of independent events it doesn't change the probability of a whatever happens here it doesn't change the probability of getting a so we can see that in this case uh, we need to know or we need to show is it true that probability of female given in favor is it going to be the same as probability that person is a female yes so um we we know that probability of female is probability of female is 40 over 100 so probability of female is 0 0.4 in this case and now we need to find what is this result here on the right hand side so uh, probability of female given in favor according to the formula is just like i said we're going to consider the top part here is the intersection between these two events which means probability of female intersect with in favor and since this event is already happened you should be able to find the probability of it and that information is going to be supplied right at the bottom here so probability in favor okay so the top part here we are going to look at the probability of that person being female and in favor so female and in favor is this one female in favor so probability is 4 over 100 so this is 0 0.04 yeah 4 over 100 next um probability of of it in favor so in favor we need to find the number of people in favor the number of people in favor is 15 plus 4 which is 19 so 19 over 100 is going to be 0 0.19 and so the answer here is going to be about 0 0.2105 okay 0 0.2105 and i'm sure that you can clearly see that 0 0.2105 is not the same as 0 0.4 and therefore we can say that uh, these two events they are actually dependent okay dependent because um, the results here is is not equal so we go back to this part when the result is not equal then the events are dependent okay Okay, what is uh, an alternative way of solving this problem? So here, here we've considered female given in favor. We can also use uh, the other way around. We can also approach this problem the other way around, which is uh, probability of in favor given female. And you need to see whether the result here is similar to probability that person is in favor of the statement now we know that the probability of the person in favor in favor is going to be um, 19 so 19 over 100 yes 19 over 100 so this is 0 0.19 so now we need to see whether the left hand side here is equal to 0 0.19 or not if it is equal then they are independent. Independent means uh, the result on the left side and the right side is equal. Let's move on and find what's the answer to this one. And according to the formula, it's going to be first we've got to find the intersection between in favor and female. And since this event has already happened, female, you know that this already happened so you should know what's the probability of it and we're going to supply that information right here at the bottom 
probability of it being female. Okay. Now, uh, what's the probability of this event at the top part? We have in favor intersect with female. So here we have in favor intersect with female and it's going to be 0 0.04 so 0 0.04 and what's the probability of female female is this part so total number is 40 40 over 100 which is 0 0.4 and the answer here is going to be 0 0.1 clearly uh, you can see that um, 0 0.1 is not the same with 0 0.19 okay and therefore for that reason you can say that female and in favor they are dependent events because of this result that you have observed just now huh? <clears throat> okay let's move on to the idea of complementary events uh, the complement of event A is denoted as A prime. Uh, sometimes it is also given a different notation. For example, A bar. So that is the complement of event A. It is a totally opposite statement of A, basically. So here, A prime or A bar is the event that contains all the outcomes of an experiment that are not in A. So therefore, the following equation is true. For example, PA plus PA prime is equal to 1. So one way of visualizing this, like I said earlier, if you have a Venn diagram, for example, S is your sample space. And uh, let's go back to the idea of sample space being students. Okay, so in, in the previous example, we've got sample space of 100 students. And that 100 students uh, can be seen to be male and female. And therefore, you have an event. So we can see, we can think about it as this is the male event, and this is the complement of male events. The complement of male event is definitely a female event. It is the same thing. So here we've got M and M prime. The complementary of male event is this one. This is the male event, and therefore. Mm, According to the rule of probability, the probability of male plus the probability of its complementary, so complementary of male here, is going to be equal to 1 because the probability of the whole sample space is 1. And we have actually uh, seen that in the, in the previous um, Google Meet session, yes? Okay. So we have this statement here, probability of an event A plus the probability of its complementary event is going to be equal to 1. And from here, we can actually play around with this. For example, you can have, you can find what is PA. So for PA is just, so you play around with this um, main formula so this is the main formula and when you play around you can see that probability of a is one minus the probability of its complementary event we can also find what is the probability of a prime so probability of a prime is just one minus p a so basically this is just uh, playing around with the with the main equation here okay now let's look at a simple example here uh, in a group of 20,000 taxpayers, 4,000 have been audited by Lembaga Hasilan Negeri at least once. So if one taxpayer is randomly selected from this group, what are the two complementary events for this experiment and what are their probabilities? So here we can clearly see that um, total number of subjects that we have or total number of elements here is going to be 20,000 and uh, we have the number of people audited the number of people audited is 4,000 okay so these are the informations that you can get straightforward from the example given above now I can define uh, an event so I'm just going to write down an event my event is called A so A is the event where taxpayer has been 
audited at least once. So this is the definition. At least once means it has been audited one time, maybe two times, three times, sorry, three times and more than that. So these are the group of people, of taxpayer, that has been audited at least once. So clearly from this uh, um, definition, we have an event that is called the complementary event and I can define I can define the complementary event as a group where taxpayer has never been audited. So this is my complementary event because this has been audited once, twice, thrice and so on. Therefore, uh, taxpayer has never been audited. That means the number of times the person has been audited is actually zero so this one is one two three four five and so on this is zero totally opposite the statements here a and a prime are totally opposites each other okay and uh so for this one the probability of a you can see it clearly probability of a probability that the taxpayer has been audited at least once is going to be how many of them has been audited at least once, which is 4,000, divided with how many subjects uh, do they have? So they have 20,000. And from this exercise here, we can see that the probability of getting event A is going to be about 0 0.2. And if you want to know what's the probability of A prime, then we are just going to uh, apply the rule given here. P A prime is 1 minus P A. So 1 minus P A is 1 minus 0 0.2. So the probability of that complementary event is 0 0.8. Okay, I think uh, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.